this is the J1Z Presso JX Pro and I'm going to show you how to dismantle the grinder. There aren't any instructions that I've found online and you need to be a little more cautious dismantling this. It's not difficult but it would be easy to get it in the wrong order. So obviously if you take the handle off and as usual um, the grinder unscrew the bean hopper. Now before you can undo this bit uh, and as usual the first thing you do is find out how many turns till the burrs can't be moved with a handle. On this grinder it's two turns so at least you know to come back two turns to get back to espresso for this grinder. The next thing you have to do is undo the adjuster and that is achieved like that. Press in on this burr as it comes looser Give some pressure in with your finger because that makes it very easy to spin this off without wearing out the clicky bit. And when that's off, there, it'll pull out and put that there. Then we have another piece in here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a little, it's got a grip on it and it's a little screw thread piece. Hold the burr in with your finger and turn this and you hear it clicking. Then it will come loose and come up the thread and that's got a little pip on the bottom that makes you clicking sound. So that goes there and then you've got the thing with lots of little holes and the bearing holder and this is the bit to be particularly careful. What will happen now, you can just let the bottom burr straight out the bottom and this bearing holder if you tip this over, it'll actually fall out. You might not know uh, the way it's meant to go in. Let's try and pull it out. And can you see? This is correct. This is the bottom. This goes into the grinder, the bit with the bottom ledge. If I tip this bit out now with the holes, right? This bit, the bearing slid all the way down to the bottom ledge. This bit goes uppermost. So it goes in the grinder like that, okay? It does not go in the grinder the other way round. And if you tried, the bearing might stick long enough for you to get it in, but it would be wrong because this bearing can actually come straight up. So we'll pop the bearing back in. That's how it goes. And then these dots go uppermost. We'll put this here and it's bearing. Now we are left with the body of the grinder. Again, it's a reverse thread. We go this way. To undo it and this shows us the lower burr okay and what I found out about the burr sizing when they say 48 mil they actually measure the burr from edge to edge so it's not actually directly related to what the actual grinding surface of the burrs is although they're fairly large burrs for a hand grinder they're not small and they do grind quickly this is the burr you took out, and this has on it a bearing shield here that's got a dish shape here and smooth here, and that goes into the grinder with the dish shape uppermost towards the bearing and the smooth side down onto the spring here. The spring is like a little cone, cone shaped. You get the narrow part of the spring closest to the burr and the wide part presses up against the bearing cover. Okay, and this is your burr, and nice quality burr, it's lovely quality. Exactly the same as in the um, JX. The only thing that's different is instead of the adjustment mechanism on the bottom of this burr, you've got this thing with an Allen key, and it would be very tempting to think that Allen key is what you undo to take the burr out from the bottom. You don't, you don't need any tools with this grinder either. So that's the grinder taken apart. This burr doesn't come out. Uh, sorry, this bearing at the bottom uh, near the burrs does not come out. This bearing at the top does. Now, what I didn't talk about when I dismantled the JX was lubrication. I use um, this product. It's called Action Can Dry PTFE. It's NSFH1 certified food contact safe. Um, it's made by Ambersil. They bought Action Can ooh, some years ago and uh, I don't have shares in them but they do make some of the best uh, food grade lubricants you can get. And dry PTFE is particularly good 
because you can lubricate this without leaving anything for coffee to stick to. It, it, like I say, it's a dry PTFE. So I'm going to put that away. Uh, get yourself some of that. Just go onto the Ambersource site, look for dry PTFE. It's not cheap. I can't remember what it is, a tin, 15, 18 pound a tin. It's got loads of uses um, in coffee machines and grinders and things like that. So where would you lubricate? Well, I would lubricate this shaft and the threads. I would uh, lubricate the front face of this bearing cap, this bearing cover. Um, I don't think you need to remove, do the back face and the spring because the spring is what's rotating against this, just, just to minimize wear and keep things nice and clean. The bearing should be sealed for life. They won't need lubrication. Just give them, uh, if you've got the top bearing out, give it a brush or a wipe just to make sure any coffee on it is up. So we're going to put the grinder together. Um, bottom burr, spring, smallest side down, widest side up. Bottom bearing shield, dish side up, flat side down. Body of the grinder, reverse thread. Screw that bottom burr on the body of the grinder. Tighten it up, tight as you can. Place the bottom burr through the bearing at the bottom, then you've got it at the top here. Take the top burr ca uh, bearing carrier and notice you've got the little ledge there that stops the bearing going through. This has to be downwards into the grinder like that and remember the bearing can come out so make sure it's all the way down and then put it into the grinder like that uh, oh these threads these are very fine threads they're not just dimples or decorations these are the threads that the adjustment ring actually turns on to give you the very fine adjustment be careful not to damage them uh, it can only go in one way so there you go that's in now then we take the little uh, ring with the dimples on the top and this is shaped like um, a gas cooker knob. It's got a flat side there that matches up with a flat side on this shaft. But to get to that, you have to push this burr in from the bottom. Can you see? You have to push that in with your finger, middle finger I use. And then you can put this dimple piece on dimples up and just Rotate it around until the flat side matches up with the flat side of the shaft. It's gone all the way down. Then you take this piece with the knurled edge. It's got a dimple on the bottom, a pip on the bottom. You put that pip downwards towards the dimples. And you turn this and screw it tight until you, you're holding the burr and you can't tighten that anymore. Then you take the adjuster. It's got little dimples on the bottom that go into the uh, these are like little balls or ball bearings, whatever they are in springs. And there's a fine thread on this that ma matches the fine thread on the bearing carrier. So we'll push that up because that allows us just to drop this in and start it without any force. We don't want to cross thread it. As you can see, it's spinning on. Now it's starting to click and that burr is now Pretty much fully home. Yep. Put the handle on just for a quick check. Okay, and that's probably. Uh, I I just like to get it on. I can just about move it, and then I'll come back. My eyes are not very good now to see in this light. I'll come back one. numbered so if you can see the numbers it makes it easier that's a couple of turns that's probably two turns back to the espresso setting put the handle on turn the grinder check there's no funny noises check everything's together as it should be finally place the capture pod on that's how you put it together you won't find that information on the internet so it's best you um, see it here 
bookmark the video if you do need to take this grinder apart and put it back together i just recommend you come back and just watch this video again okay.